In this video, I will discuss issues regarding convergence and mixing of MCMC chains, and I will do so using a simple example. Specifically, let us generate samples x0, x1, and so forth from a standard normal distribution. That is, any sample xt will be distributed normally with mean 0 and standard deviation or variance equal 1. To do so, we will now use a metropolis hastings algorithm. As we just learned, this algorithm proceeds in four steps. The first step is to actually choose a starting location. Say in this case, we're going to start at x0 equals 0, so at the mean. We also set t equals 0. In the second step, we're then going to propose moves from current values xt to potential new values xt prime. And we're going to do so with a so-called uniform transition kernel. That is, we're going to say that the new value xt prime is drawn from a uniform distribution centered on xt and with widths d. Uniform transition kernels are often used. They have a benefit of cancelling out in the Hastings ratio, as we're going to see in a second. Next, we can accept or reject those moves with probability h, the Hastings ratio. If you remember, the Hastings ratio is generally the minimum of 1 and the ratio between the probability density at the new location xt prime times the probability to actually come back from xt prime to xt divided by the probability density at xt times the probability to actually propose to go from xt to xt prime. Since we're using a uniform transition kernel here, these two probabilities are exactly equal. It is exactly equally likely to propose to go from xt to xt prime as it is to go from xt prime to xt. Hence, this latter term here cancels out and the Hastings ratio simplifies. The so simplified Hastings ratio is given here on the left. It consists simply of the probability density of the new location xt prime divided by the probability density at the old location xt. Here, the probability densities are given by the normal density function 1 over the square root of 2 pi sigma squared times e at the power of minus the difference between a value and the mean squared divided by 2 sigma squared. Notice here that the first two terms actually cancel out. Notice also that we're calculating the Hastings ratio in the log. That is often done in implementations to avoid very, very small values. In this particular case here, the Hastings ratio then simplifies to this equation here on the right. As usual, the last step of the Metropolis Hastings algorithm then consists of incrementing the index and going back to step two, that is, continuing to proposing moves from wherever we resulted in step three. I have implemented this simple algorithm in R, and we're going to use it to study a few properties of Markov chain Monte Carlo algorithms in the following slides. Shown here is the output of our MCMC algorithm to sample from a standard normal distribution for the case of starting the chain at x0 equals 0, and for the choice of d equal 10, that is, proposing the new values always with a uniform distribution of width 10 centered on the current value. There are different ways of looking at an MCMC chain. One common way is to actually plot the so-called trace that is shown here at the very top. The trace shows the value a Markov chain was at at every particular iteration. This trace is used to assess whether our algorithm is actually mixing well, that is, whether it's exploring the entire space of the parameters well. This is an example where everything looks perfect. And one way to realize that is also through the acceptance rate, that is how often our proposals are actually accepted. That value is shown here on the top right, and in this particular case, it's about 31%. A Markov chain that actually accepts about 33% is considered a perfectly tuned Markov chain. On the lower two panels, we can actually see the samples shown as distributions. On the left, we have in black the true normal distribution from which we want to sample, and in red, a density estimation from the first 5,000 MCMC samples shown in the trace above. In the right plot, we see the very same thing again, but this time as a quantile-quantile plot. Here, the true distribution is shown on the diagonal, and the MCMC sample, so the empirical quantiles, are shown in red. These two plots seem again to suggest that everything is looking fine, that is, our metropolis hastings algorithm seems to indeed generate samples from that particular normal distribution. On the next slides, we're going to now look at a few cases where that's not true. 
We're going to modify both the starting locations as well as, more importantly, the proposal width, D. As we're going to see, this particular choice of how to propose new values will have a huge impact on the acceptance rate and therefore the performance on the chain. Shown here is now a case where things don't look perfectly. This is a case in which the Markov chain was again started at x0 equals 0, but it was run with a proposal width d of only 0.1. That proposal width, as it turns out, is much too narrow. One easy way to see this is by just looking at the acceptance rate, which in this case is over 99%, which is very, very high. Another way is just to look at the chain itself. As you can see, the very, sh the very narrow proposal range actually means that we only propose values very close to where we were before. And as a result, the chain is not really exploring the entire space, but it's just making tiny, tiny steps around the place it actually started. We can see this on the lower left, where the distribution is actually way too narrow. Indeed, those samples are only sampled from the center of the normal distribution, and the chain never actually ventured into the tails. Again, our QQ plot shows that too, with the true quantiles that are very low or very high are actually inexistent in our empirical samples. Let's look next at a case in which the proposal width was much too wide. So here again we started the MCMC at x0 equals 0, but d was set to 100. The result is that the chain actually proposes always values very very far away from the current value. These values are often in very bad locations, that is in locations in which the probability density is actually very low. As a result, this Markov chain has a very low acceptance rate, only roughly 4%. And you can see that in the trace too, in that at some values, the chain just seems to hang around before actually continuing. As a result, we have a very noisy density estimation on the lower left. This is simply because even though we have 5,000 points that we sampled, most of these are actually not independent, and hence it's as if we sampled way too few points to get at that distribution. Actually, it's important to note this, that all Markov chains, if run long enough, would actually converge to the stationary distribution, regardless of the proposal which is chosen. This here is a case in which the Markov chain would just have to be run for a very, very long time in order to provide enough independent samples so that we would get a smooth distribution. In the case of the proposal width being too small that we've seen before, that's also true. If run long enough, the chain will eventually venture into the tails and generate samples from there too. So the tuning in terms of the proposal width is not important in terms of getting the wrong result. It is just important because otherwise computations can just heavily blow up. Indeed, the goal must be to actually obtain a proper sampling from the distribution with as few iterations as possible. And as mentioned before, that's often the case if the acceptance rate is around one third or 33%. Let us now go back to a case in which we chose d equal 10, so the proposal which we found to work well initially. However, in this case, I started the chain at x0 equals 1000, which is a value that is really, really far away from the actual distribution. Remember, the mean of our distribution here is at 0, with a standard deviation of 1, that means values far further out than plus or minus 3 are considered really far out in the tails. But as you see here, our MCMC chain actually properly manages to sample from this distribution. It just takes the chain a while to actually reach the proper di distribution. That is, it starts off with 1000, at which the probability density is non-zero, but very, very, very small, and then slowly moves towards more probable values. Just shortly before iteration 1000, it seems to enter the high probability density range of that distribution, and then proceeds sampling as you would expect it. The acceptance rate here is around 33%, perfect, and also as of iteration 1000, it actually seems to properly explore the entire range. However, before that, it sampled from locations that are usually considered too low density to be samples. Consider a location far to the left of minus 3. At such a location, the probability density of the normal distribution is very tiny, maybe say 10 to the minus 30. Hence, our samples should only contain one such case in case we had a chain length of 10 to the power of 30. So if we let our chain run for 10 to the 30 cases, we might have one of those in the left. But in this particular case, we have many of those samples that are smaller than minus 3 because we started at 1000. Actually, too many of them given the number of samples that we have. We say 
this chain has actually a dependence on the starting location. And we see that in the lower left, in which we see that the density at the actual distribution is actually too low because of our too heavy tail on the left. How can we deal with this problem? That's actually a quite common problem if you think about it. In the previous cases, I always started the MCMC chain at kind of the perfect location, that is, at the mean of that distribution, that's the point with the highest density. However, in practice, we very often might not know where actually our distribution lies, so we cannot get the proper starting location so easily. Of course, it is, it is advised to always try very hard to have an algorithm to estimate a starting location that is appropriate. However, as we see here, the MCMC chain kind of finds its way on its own to the proper peak. We just have to give it time. Thus, we might actually just have to disregard the initial part of the chain and then only start recording samples at a later stage. Shown here is the result if we do so. So at 1000 I cut the chain and if I only use the samples on the right of it, that is samples 1000 through 5000, I get the distribution shown in the lower plots with dashed lines. As you can see, our MCMC chain is now properly sampling from that distribution. This procedure is usually referred to as burn-in, that is, we let the chain explore the space for a couple of iterations, iterations turn burn-in, before actually recording. 